What's the point of flying around the galaxy fighting the Empire if you don't look the part? My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're sharing the location to some of the coolest secret sabers you can get your hands on in Star Wars Jedi Survivor. First on our list is Santari Kree's lightsaber. This one is relatively easy to find, but a bit of a pain to execute, especially once you've beaten the game and roaming patrols of enemies dot the area around Rambler's Reach. Nevertheless, head to the Bygone Settlement. This is the closest meditation point and head down the hillside back towards the Untamed Downs. At the base of the hill, you'll hang a left and head towards this sort of hangar bay. Fun fact, you can fight one of the legendary bosses inside this hangar. We've got an awesome video breaking all of those down, so give it a watch. But I digress. Outside the hangar, I'd recommend killing everything around. There are a few roller mines, and depending on where you're at in the game, bound to be some enemies, so clear out as much as you can. From here, you'll want to slice this terminal, and a roller mine will shoot up and start tracking you. Your goal now is to have that roller mine chase you all the way back towards that bygone settlement hillside, and slightly past it and up into this cave here. I do recommend you also clear the cave first as there are some enemies that can really trip you up. As long as the roller mine is still within reach, force pull it and throw it against the wall inside the cave and open up a new chamber, giving you access to your first secret weapon, Centauri Kree's lightsaber. Personally, I think this is a really clean looking lightsaber. I know some folks like the bells and whistles, but for me, there's nothing sexier than some clean lines and I feel the team really nailed that with this design. It may not be the flashiest, but it certainly won me over. The next secret weapon isn't really a secret, more of something that's easily overlooked if you're not paying attention. What I'm talking about is Seer Junda's lightsaber. This weapon will appear in a box right near the Mantis on Jedha, but only after a certain beat of the main story. It's a rather significant part of the adventure, so I won't ruin anything here, but as you're moving around the galaxy, keep an eye out as this is something you can miss. In terms of its look, it's a rather beefy lightsaber that's got a lot of symmetry, which is nice, but also has that sort of hiding in the desert vibe Seer is going for throughout Survivor. The grip is wrapped with some sort of cloth and leather, which really does add just the right touch to tie it closely to Seer's character. It's not my personal favorite, but I'm sure it'll vibe with someone out there. Since we're already on Jeddah, let's talk about Eno Cordova's lightsaber. This one will take a little persistence to unlock, so be patient, as it's not the easiest to obtain. To start off, make your way to Wayfinder's Tomb, located on this plateau here. You'll notice on top there's clearly some sort of secret lurking below, and that's what we're angling to uncover. To unlock the secret passage, we need to complete three trials located at the markers you see on the map here. Each trial is really a small puzzle, and the goal across the board is to move the orb from its starting location to the top of the structure and then push it into place, completing one third of the overall challenge. If you're having trouble finding these structures, look for the sort of T-like pillars protruding off the top. The first challenge, the Path of Conviction, is easily the most challenging, mainly because of some of the tight timing. Head over to the structure and clear out any enemies before you attempt any of the puzzle elements. There are Imperials on both sides, so clear out everything just to be safe. There are some extra goodies here, like the wood weapon material, so clean house now and save a trip later. Once you get your bearings, it's time to solve the riddle. Start by pulling the first orb here. It'll lower one of the paths across the way. Then push the second orb to unlock a new landing. Jump to that new landing and pull the third orb. Go back to where you started and pull that first orb again. Jump back to the top platform and pull the third orb. Drop down and push the second orb below. Finally, jump across the landing here and push the second orb up to the top of the structure. Once you get to the top, push the orb into place and you'll have completed the first challenge. Challenges two and three are thankfully much more straightforward. Make your way towards the second challenge, the Path of Persistence, located here. First things first, clear out any Imperials in the area. There are a good number, so do some fighting first to save yourself a bit of hassle. First step here is to make your way to the upper landing and push the orb. This will move the larger block nearby forward into position. Then jump back down to the outside of the structure and navigate back towards this platform and push the orb and it should go all the way to the top. The trick now is to just force pull that first orb back to its original position, giving you access to the top of the structure. Get to the top, defeat the Imperial standing in your way, and solve the second challenge. The third challenge is somewhere in between the first and second in terms of complexity. It's really more about maneuvering around than anything else. Head to this location here to start the Path of Restoration. First things first, clear out any Imperials. It's not swarming with enemies, but there are enough to be annoying. 
then navigate towards the back side of the area. You'll have to do a bit of climbing and some wall running, but if you use your map, you'll find the first navigation point pretty easy. From here, push the first orb. This will rearrange the blocks on the far wall, giving the second orb a new pathway. Move across and push that second orb to lower a climbable wall by the entrance of the area. Scale that wall and enter a small area with a third orb. Push that into place and a block will slide out to the face of the cliff, which is really the final piece to the puzzle. From here, you'll need to push that second orb back to its starting position. I'm not afraid to admit, it did take me a minute to figure that out. Then go back to the first orb and push it to rearrange the wall so the pathway goes upwards. Then go back to the second orb and push it to the top of the structure. From here, you'll need to reach the top and you do this by climbing the wall near the first orb. Take the zip line to the top and defeat the Imperials. There is a sentry droid up there, so be careful. Dispatch the enemies and push the final orb into place. With all three challenges done, head back to Wayfinder's tomb and stand on the central disc. As you might have guessed, it's an elevator and takes you to the bottom where there's a chest waiting for you. Inside, you'll find Jedi Master Eno Cordova's lightsaber. And I should also mention there is a map upgrade station here. By slicing it with BD-1, you'll be able to see all unfound relics such as Priorite, Jedi Scrolls, and Data Discs on your hollow map. Master Cordova's lightsaber is another pretty clean design with a bit of flair here and there. It's almost completely symmetrical, which is pleasing, but it's also got a really interesting cross guard design that almost shoots off the side of the lightsaber like horns. I think with the right color scheme, this weapon could look great, either inspired by the Jedi or, if you're so inclined, the Sith. The next saber I think we should talk about is the Hunter's lightsaber. This is actually one you can get relatively early on in the game. You will need some advanced abilities like double jumping and wall running, but most importantly, you'll need to know how to mind control large creatures. Head to the Southern Reach or really any meditation point in that area and head to the Tronto Shell. Once you're underneath, cast your mind control ability and it will lower its head. You'll notice the left tusk is climbable. Jump on and hang on for a short ride to a previously unreachable area. Once you reach the crossroads here, take the right path and keep moving up the mountain. You'll have to fight one of those Garakos, but hopefully at this point, that's not a challenge for you. Once you do that, move up to the end of the path and climb on the flying mount. Glide on down across the way until you reach this sort of ridge. Watch out for the Shiverpedes as there are a couple on the landing waiting to ambush you. Move towards the end of the path, loot the chest, and you'll now have access to one of my personal favorite weapon skins, the Hunter Lightsaber. What I truly like about this skin is just how good it looks with some of the different materials players have access to, specifically things like the wood and leather materials. Not every lightsaber looks great with those skin options, but on the Hunter lightsaber, it looks fantastic. Whether it's in dual wield or cross guard stance, the weapon just looks incredible, and it's the small details and of course that massive tooth feature that really makes it feel unique. For all you wannabe Sith Lords out there, let's hunt down a lightsaber that's got a bit more of an angular look. I'm talking about the Edgehawk lightsaber, and this one is different in the fact that we'll have to track down all four major components, but don't worry, they're easy enough to find. On Kobo, in the Southern Reach area of the map, you're looking for this massive manhole looking thing. You'll need Force Lift to open it, but once you have that ability, you'll be able to drop down and clear out the area. Move through the dark tunnel and take your first right. Move down that new hallway and take the next right, watching out for an enemy waiting to ambush you. The first piece, the Edgehawk Switch, is in the first chest at the end of that hallway. Double back and head into the lit portion of the underground area. Jump up to the ledge and be ready to fight another ambushing enemy. Reach the top of the landing and jump and dash across the gap to the top of the broken lift. Walk a few steps forward and you'll pick up the second piece, the Edgehawk Emitter. Jump back across the gap and blast open the door, move through the hallway, and the final chest is sitting there at the end on the left, the Edgehawk Grip. At this point, you can leave the area as the fourth piece is actually not here. Make your way back to Rambler's Reach. There, climb to the top of Pylune Saloon near the garden and make your way to the tower at the back. Climb all the way to the top using the vines that creep around the side of the building. From up top, jump and dash across the gap to reach a new landing. Move to the back of this section until you reach one of those lift and slam chests. Here you'll unlock the final piece to the Edgehawk, the pommel. Like I said before, this is a very angular design. There's a lot of sharp edges and for the most part, straight lines that give it a sort of menacing look. You can make it look regal and ornate, more like a Jedi Saber, but I do think it looks best when you embrace your dark side and color it accordingly. While not a lightsaber, I did want to sprinkle in one final weapon for all you blaster stance Jedis out there. What we're searching for is the Quick Draw Pistol, which is a really beefy, almost realistic space gun, which I know is kind of nonsensical, but really the only way I can describe it. 
You can unlock this weapon once you have Force Lift and you're able to manipulate Kobo material with BD-1. Head back to Rambler's Reach and just a stone's throw away is this massive hangar door. Open it up and drop down until you reach the bottom. Watch out for the Kobo particles as they do break your fall if you land awkwardly like I did. Jump and dash across the underground area until you reach this platform. Turn to the side and you'll find the control orb. Throw it back towards the first platform and lock it into place. This will start the beam and you'll have a clear way out of the chamber. Follow the beam back to this building and using BD-1, trace a path backwards towards this semi-open door on the other side of the building. If you do everything right, you're greeted with a fun little explosion, but the bigger prize is the blaster skin waiting inside. Like I said, I really like this weapon. It's a big beefy pistol that you can make look all sorts of different ways. If you want it to look like an Imperial blaster, paint it up and it fits right in. You could also change it up and make it look more like a weapon you'd see a bounty hunter use. The design of the skin itself is really flexible, which should give you a lot more freedom when it comes to changing the look of the various components. So there you have it, five secret lightsabers and a blaster for good measure that you can now hunt down and obtain for yourself. As always, if you found this video helpful and you want more Star Wars Jedi Survivor guides in your feed, do me a solid, hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. I also want to invite you to join the legacy gaming community on Discord. We just revamped our entire server, so if you're looking for a place to hang out, talk about great games, win free prizes, and group up with friends, check out the link in the description below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.